The Kettle Valley Steam Railway is a heritage railway in the Okanagan Valley of British Columbia running for only 10 kilometers of the original 325 mile Kettle Valley Railway between Prairie Valley and Trout Creek. The history of the Kettle Valley Railway starts in 1910 when the CPR made an attempt to laying tracks from east to west from Hope to Grand Forks, British Columbia connecting with Canadian Pacific's main and branch lines. Sir Shaughnessy of the Canadian Pacific Railway agreed to the project that would take five years to complete, so he contacted Andrew McCullough to build the railway and serve in the area of the Okanagan. For a large part of the 20th century, the KVR's branch lines would even serve Merritt, B.C., to connect with Canadian Pacific's main line at Spence's Bridge. The Kettle Valley Railway made a big response to the construction of the Vancouver, Victoria and Eastern Railway, which was solely owned by the Great Northern Railway. Even though Canadian Pacific and Great Northern had an influence competition, it seemed there was still the need for a third railway through the Kootenays, not just in the Okanagan Valley, they began construction in 1910, and following that in 1913, the provincial government and the Great Northern Railway had reached out to formal construction, and the regular operations began immediately on constructing the Kettle Valley Railway. On May 31st, 1915, the surveyors of the KVR driven the last and final spike between Merritt and Midway, BC, and the service began immediately with two passenger trains commence service from Vancouver to Midway, B.C. In 1931, the Kettle Valley Railway was eventually folded and the Canadian Pacific Railway made a last-minute decision to merge the Kettle Valley Railway. It was also becoming clear that passenger trains that ran the KVR were becoming unprofitable Trains like such as the Kettle Valley Express and Kootenay Express were becoming unprofitable, dirty, dated, unmaintained, and unfinancial. Ridership was even down. Freight service would continue to operate on the KVR until 1989 when the Canadian Pacific Railway decided that freight service on the KVR was no longer profitable due to a war of proximity profits in the Okanagan Valley. But there were visioners who felt that this would be an advantage to at least preserve a section of the railway line in Summerland. Those groups started out as private groups, but eventually they worked with the British Columbia Provincial Government, the Royal Museum, and the BC Forest Museum on laying down tracks to putting in the railway line. And together, they were able to save and utilize only 10 miles of the original 325-mile Kettle Valley Railway. Since the Kettle Valley Steam Railway was commenced operations as a heritage railway in 1995, only two steam locomotives and one diesel locomotive were ever utilized in excursions on this line. The first steam locomotive to utilize this line since the end of steam was number three, a former mail lumber company, Two Truck Shea, that was built in 1924 by Lima and was on loan from the BC Forest Museum in Duncan, BC until they heard about 3716, a former Canadian Pacific N2B 280 consolidation built in 1912 by the Montreal Locomotive Works. 3716 was built in 1912 by the Montreal Locomotive Works as CPR number 3916. It went to work hauling mostly drags through the Crow's Nest Pass 
it was a coal burner but was converted into an oil burner in the early 40s then when the diesel engines took over the CP system 3716 was placed on display in Port Coquitlam British Columbia until 1972 when BC Rail purchased 3716 and restored it to operation at that time 3716 served as a backup engine to Canadian Pacific Royal Hudson 2860 until 1999 when BC Rail ended their steam program and BC Rail was later merged with Canadian National by then, 3716 was eventually sold to the Kettle Valley Steam Railway and has been operating ever since, pulling tourists from late May to early October. Our train excursion was delayed due to a nagging problem with 3716's brakes, and while that task was being fixed up, we sat in Prairie Valley Station Idle next to the locally famous Alco Diesel number 803. This little logger was originally built for the Southern Pacific Railway and eventually found itself under the Canadian logging industry and is now serving up as a backup engine to Canadian Pacific 3716 and is only used on the Kettle Valley Steam Railway in excursions when 3716 is either not fired up or not operable at the time. The pointed hour of 11 o'clock a.m., 3716 pulls out of Prairie Valley Station with the excursion. As the train departs Prairie Valley Station, not only does 3716's loud five-chime steam whistle echo through the valley as we carefully roll over the crossing at Bathlen Road, but the first five miles of tracks of the KVSR accelerate downhill, going down a steep 2.2% grade of less than five miles between Prairie Valley and West Summerland.
West Summerland Station was the main station for the KVSR, but however, only two tracks didn't leave enough storage space for a locomotive shop or a car shop to have locomotives or cars be worked on and be restored. Today, however, the West Summerland Station was converted recently into a flag stop for people living nearby in the community up the hill from there to come and ride. Between West Summerland and Canyon View siding, the grade decreases by a 0.6% grade. That's roughly 20 feet climbing in elevation than the 2.2% uh, grade that we encountered earlier. I do apologize if this uh, estimation on the grades is not precise, but if anyone watching this video has any precise information or has any specific information on the grade that may be accurate, please let me know and I can update this video accordingly.
Here at Canyon View Siding, 3716 has uncoupled and is moving up to the other end of the train for the return trip to Prairie Valley. But first, we will back out onto the Trout the Creek Trestle, and then, then we'll let ready. families off for a photo opportunity to take pictures or even videos of them with the 3716 herself. And then we'll be on our way back to Prairie Valley. Okay, folks, here comes the 3716 to hook up to the far end of the train. As the train slowly backs out onto the Trout Creek Trestle, we have a good opportunity to mention the train's consist. Behind the 3716's tender, three ex-Canadian Pacific stock cars that are converted into open-air cars, including the one that I was in that day. I unfortunately do not have any information on those aside from the fact that they were utilized with the Canadian Pacific Railway until the early 1990s. Two XCP vintage passenger cars bring up the tail end of their train. At the time of construction, the Trout Creek Trestle was the third largest railway bridge in all of North America. However, today it carries the Kettle Valley Steam Railway 235 feet above the canyon walls and is more than two football fields long. When the Canadian Pacific Railway took over the KVR in 1931, bridge supports were added on later to support heavier trains across Trout Creek. Two hundred meters. The total length across the canyon is about fifteen hundred feet or five hundred meters. Now, looking down to the sunny side, that's the left side away from the lake. You see another bridge down below. That is a pipe bridge connected with the Summerland Agricultural Research Station on the other side. And looking off to the far west horizon, in the mist, we can see Grand Mountain. That mountain is over seven thousand feet above sea level. Now, taking a look towards the lake. You see that mountain range that divides the Okanagan Valley from the Kettle Valley on the far side. When the train used to leave particular would zigzag up that mountainside, there are three levels of abandoned rail bed over there now. The lowest part of the Shoe Lake Pass. Uh, the Shoe Lake Lodge is still there, by the way, in terms of place to visit. The train then would continue behind the top of the Okanagan Mountain Provincial Park. You can see how bare that mountain is due to the wildfires we had in 2003 when lightning struck Squamish Point opposite Peachland, the flames burnt out of control for quite a while, eventually continued up in the storm to destroy many homes, and continued up in the Myra Canyon destroying most of our historic trestles. Now this trestle has since been rebuilt no longer for the railway, but now for part of the trans the Bicycle Trail. The train then continued down the east side into the Cattle Valley and down to Beaverdale, uh, Rock Creek, east of Midway and beyond. Now, the train never did go to Kelowna, but there was a stagecoach service supply from Kelowna up to Myra Canyon to catch a train. Now, please uh, take a look across the mountain there, uh, across the lake, see if you can see a small tunnel. I'll point it out in a moment. That is the little tunnel on the lower level of the abandoned Kettle Valley Line. There are two more levels of abandoned rail bay up above that. I'll try to stand up. Trying to walk trail. Now the much larger tunnel you cannot see is just a thin spiral tunnel between the upper track and the middle track, 1600 feet long, or about 200 meters. It's been closed for a number of years, and it's also been the fact that it's made in the house. And now the man who had to look back is looking at the top floor, and we're up to the snow floor, and we can't sit on it. 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 
is up in the train stop up ahead at the train of the platform. We're looking up the center doors and gate number one for the passenger inside the, the two inside the and the passenger with the air after moving off the Trout Creek trestle, we stop at the picturesque Canyon View Station. And the conductors will treat you to taking your picture with the engine itself. All you need to do is just get a nice pose and a nice smile for your picture with your family and the engine. But if your picture is for a train only, you may have to move a little further away from the crowds, therefore so you're not photobombing them. And remember to zoom in on the train. Once everyone is back on board, our engineer skillfully takes the throttle, but he accidentally went in reverse for a second or two. But either way, the train is heading back for Prairie Valley. Wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that means that means when they they do that when they're at a crossing. They do they do one they do two longs, one they do two longs, one short and one long long at a crossing. As the train heads back to Prairie Valley Station, let's hear the sights and sounds of the 280 charging up the steep 2.2% grades.
a tool compartment inside the cab of the locomotive popped open for some reason. So we had to stop to allow the crew to make some minor adjustments. After the excursion, I decided to chase the 130 excursion. Moments before the train could depart, I decided to have my lunch break while the crew prepares for the second and last excursion of the day to Trout Creek and back. At 1 p.m., 3716 makes a blast of her whistle and the excursion begins. In a moment, the crew will wave to acknowledge me, not just because I'm a rail fan, but also because I'm a longtime supporter of the Kettle Valley Steam Railway and that I have a good relationship with this railroad.
After Prairie Valley, I set up at the flag stop at West Summerland, but it wasn't long before I heard 3716's whistle blow that it was coming toward the crossing at Victoria Road. But at least I got a good video and photo shot of the 3716 and the train itself backing down the main line at this location. I will also do the same thing on the way back. I tried getting a good shot of the train going over the crossing at Murano Avenue, but unfortunately a truck got in the way of the shot. Oh well, I guess you can't get every shot precisely the way you want it to be. At Canyon View Siding, I set up right as the train was coming into view. Once the train has stopped, I asked the engineer off camera as to why they swapped standpoints in the cab of the locomotive, but it wouldn't be for long when 3716 was being moved up to the other end of the train again. Once the brakeman has thrown the switch into the opposite position, I get the opportunity to take 3716's picture yet again.
Hey, Ron. take a picture of me, I take a picture of you. <laughs> Getting ready for the for the for the picture shots. Coming off Trout Creek Trestle, I have another opportunity to take the train's picture. Photos like these would be certainly fun to add to your social media page or even send to the management for them to admire your pictures because I mean who says nobody likes photos of trains? After having a nice chat with the crew while everyone else had their photos taken with the engine, 3716 and the train are heading back for Prairie Valley once again.
Bye, Ron. Unfortunately, I missed the chance to capture the train at the crossing at Murano Avenue, so we moved to the flag stop at West Summerland to capture the train yet again. In a moment, we will get one last wave in from the crew as the 280 charges up the 2.2% grade. photo opportunity is made as 3716 and the train roll back into Prairie Valley Station. After this run by, it would be time for my visit with the 280 and the railway to end, as I had some family to visit with. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, share a comment, like and subscribe for more. And please be sure to check out some of my other train videos and some of my elevator videos and my aviation videos on YouTube. If you ever find yourself in the Okanagan Valley of British Columbia, I'd highly recommend giving this railway a visit as it is a rail fan favorite location. And if you like steam, then I highly recommend that the Kettle Valley Steam Railway is one of those places for you.